What's up? What's up? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Y'all ready for this? Once again, we're going to work from the jack. Little magic jack. And, uh... So straight out the gate, we're going to go back to rule number one. Like you think I'm playing? There it is, right there. All right. And on this rule number one, we just, let me just expand this so I can see this. It says, the appointing officer, the president of the corporation and senior vice president for the network or the health care facility, health care facility administrators for central office, the senior vice president responsible for personal, personnel, and labor relations. Stay with this. Or those whom they have delegated the powers to appointing employees may also be re referred to as appointing officer or appointing authority. We're still gonna roll with this the senior vice president uh corporate officer uh yeah corporate officer delegates to uh by the president to the responsible to be responsible for the personnel and labor relations functions all right you got that so the power is delegated to individuals such as uh, human resource directors at the facilities because remember it says the designee okay or who they designate these powers to so we're just going to go to this termination letter right we're just going to go to that and we're going to look at it where it says as a designee of the senior vice president I have reviewed the entire record including all exhibits submitted to oath. I want you to hear that part. The record and recommendation of administrative law judge, the, what's this, letter submitted by your uh, counsel and your past disciplinary record. I agree with the judge mm -hmm, decision Sustaining the charges of AOL. We'll get to that one. The lateness and insubordination. Those two key right there. The lateness and insubordination. And with his recommendation of penalty of termination. Great, great, great. And then they sign their name at the bottom. Okay. Now, the key thing is to this letter is this letter is dated when? October 5th, 2010. Boom. Okay. Let's do this. We're going to move up to the point, move forward, and go up to the, and go, nah, they ain't going to go forward. We're going to go all the way back. Yeah. We're going to go to that date and to that incident. When the individual, the uh, probationary employee who just happened to be the hospital police director. You're going to go to that. Where he used the vehicle in a threatening manner. Boom. We already, we, dis we already discussed that. He broke several laws. Okay. He also violated the corporate compliance policy. Yes. The key thing, he was on probation. And under your employer's rules and regulations or personnel rules and regulations... It says 5.2.3 that a, pro a, pro a probationary employee can be terminated, right, uh, by violations of the corporate compliance policy, by uh, actions of gross misconduct. They can be terminated at any time. Okay? That's what it says. At any time. So... We, we question the fact that 
This individual violated your own corporate compliance policy, your own personal rules and regulations, right? And on three separate occasions while on probation, really with um, the act of uh, gross misconduct and uh, traffic violation and uh, is a class A misdemeanor. That's a gross misconduct under traffic law twelve twelve, and then under uh, or penal law one. What's that? Uh, one twenty twenty. Reckless in the, that's recklessness, which also constitutes reckless and dangerous because the mere fact that you put somebody in fear of intimate danger, okay, a physical harm. Yeah, using that motor vehicle, threatening an individual. Oh, your foot slipped, your foot slipped three separate times, your foot slipped. You shouldn't be driving if your foot's slipping that much. But I notice this only happens and occurs while you're on the property. Yes, yeah, so the city of New York's property, that's when it only occurs. Okay, so you're not threatening, and you get a pass. So we're going to go to the mere fact of, like I said once before, where he basically said, the juice. I don't want him uh, parking. Tell him to go park in the employees in a uh, visitor's parking lot or park his vehicle on the street. This is what he said. This is what this was the directive given. Okay. Uh, knowingly, you blatantly did this. Abuse your powers and authority. And then with that, right along you doing it and denying me access to my paid parking lot where I pay for the privilege to park. Under signed contract agreement, once again, what was your cause and reason for you singling me out? There was another officer passed away I know did you single him out also okay was it the fact that we were men of color did we intimidate you because of our size or is this just a thing you do you know because based on your actions and how you respond I wonder how you stay with NYPD that long which brings about the question of all your arrests which you had over there because your actions here dictate what you did over there. We're going to leave that alone. That's that department of father to figure out. But we're going to stick with this. And this is under the designee, which is the human resources director. And the mere fact that you knew of these allegations made against him in reference to his actions in violation of corporate compliance policy. And how you failed to direct it. Not direct it, to correct it. But yet and still, once the first action, that action occurred with the first action of the incident with the motor vehicle, it says in your uh, corporate compliance policy, any, um, any laws being broken, that falls under the whistleblower, any laws, any laws, do I have to go there? I think I got to go there, yo. I got, I got time. I could do this. Yeah, I could do this real quick. This is, the, this is why you got to be well vested in their stuff. You don't use your stuff. You use their stuff. And you hold them accountable to their actions on their stuff. All right? So, yeah, right here. Your corporate compliance. Right? Okay. So, we're going to come down to... Uh, what is that? Oh. Okay, this one is on fraud. All right. These are the little things that you give out regularly under your corporate compliance. Bingo. We have action. And it says it here. And it says basically, what are the responsibilities under HAC's corporate compliance pro program? All right. And it says all members of the, of the HAC workforce are obligated to participate in the compliance program. One. Two. All members of the HAC workforce must have a, a, a affirmative or what is it, affirmative responsibility to report violations promptly 
to the Office of Corporate Compliance, OCC. In addition, all members of the Health and Hospitals Corporation workforce must participate and or cooperate in good faith with any investigations into a reported violation by truth be a uh, truthful okay by what says being truthful with the investigator and preserve documents or documentation and or report or, or records relevant to ongoing investigation. Hmm. What are the consequences for failure to participate in HAC corporate compliance program? All right. It says HAC is committed to ensuring that there is uniform practices for employment for, and for enforcement and discipline for individuals at all levels of the organization. Who fail to comply with all federal state uh, federal and state laws, regulations, guidelines, and principles. Those who fail to comply with applicable laws and policies will face disciplinary child actions up to and including termination of employment and or other affiliations or contract with HAC. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's go to your corporate compliance. We're going to go to, um, where is it at? Where is it? Oh, man. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. All right. We're gonna, you got to get this because, see, you got you to, gotta, oh, here we go. Here we go. Number five, it's a dis disciplinary policies, right? Unf unprofessional or unethical conduct and or violations of applicable laws and or HEC policy may result in disciplinary actions up to and including termination of employment and or other affiliations or contracts with HEC. And it says policies on non-intimidation and retaliation. There was a two already there. I'll say zero tolerance policy on retaliation or intimidation for good faith reporting, good faith reporting of compliance issues or violations. Okay, we're going to go, we ain't going to go with it, yo. We ain't going to go with it. I'm just going to come back here and I'm going to show you. This is this is not made up. This is theirs. They give it to you every year. Bingo. We got action. That's theirs. I just highlight everything. So on that note, as the designee, once the complaint was filed with EEO and with supervision, and I know for a fact that the captain spoke to you in reference to it. Hold up. We had a meeting with the union, and you said, after I spoke to you, in reference to the ongoing situation with this knucklehead, you said your situation, you said my situation was different. Don't worry, you were well aware of it. So if you was well aware of it, how did you get to the point of signing that termination without addressing the whistleblower? But yet you allow the uh, EEO to submit fraudulent documents, even sending a fraudulent document to the state. Wait a minute. From what I was told, the facility EEO is not, is not authorized to send. Wait a minute. Let's go, let's go back to the, the real deal. She says she conducted an investigation, right? Under Mayor Order 16. What is that? E? Under investigations, is either E or F. You're not, no officer or employer, no, let's say it's right, no officer or employee is authorized to conduct an investigation. 
So how did she sign up for this investigation and sit up there? Mere fact of doing something like that would constitute 19500 for official misconduct. It would also constitute subsection 2020, criminal liability. It would also constitute uh, 2025 because she's the EEO for this facility. She's employed. Yeah. Criminal liability of the corporation. It would also constitute because she's working with others. 105, conspiracy. Yeah, 1500 conspiracy. All right, you submitted the document, a punishment instrument. Yeah, that would be 21045. Once again, you submitted it on the file on the record. That would be 17530. Class A misdemeanor. Once again, okay, you submitted it uh, so they can use it in another agency. Am I correct? That would be corrupting the government, sending them fraudulent information, making them step on their own toes. Okay. Once again, that would be 496, subsection 496.02, which would constitute Class E felony. So we want to get back to that human resources director, the designee, that appointing officer. How did you not represent? <laughs> The dirty director while he was on probation for his gross misconduct. You was aware of it. You was aware of none of the things he was doing. But yet you I understand, I understand. Uh, it was above your pay grade. So that would be the senior vice president, am I correct? Because she was the executive officer for the facility. So we're going to put that in the senior vice president lap, right? Yeah, but under Mayor Order 16, what was you supposed to do about her? You were obligated to report her. Oh, this is real sticky. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Hence, you deprived me of that whistleblower, right? You deprived me of it because I... Therefore, the whistleblower will fall under civil service law, section 75B. Whistleblower. It will also fall under New York State Labor Law, 740. Whistleblower. It will also fall under, what's that, New York Labor Law, New York's uh, local law, number 33. Whistleblower. So that's three whistleblowers. And you deprived it, right? So if you deprived it, that means that you violated due process, right? Do I got to go there again? Let me go there one, one more time. We're going to do this up. We're not going to make it up. You don't make it up. You, you go by documentation. And under this documentation, and we gonna, here we go. All right? That's why I love this. These kids have the most beautiful gadgets in the world. You can save stuff. Back in the days, you had to go, you got to understand, you would have to go to a library to try to find stuff. So here we go. We're going to go with this. If an agency can't prove its charges of employees' misconduct or poor performance or the, or the employee is able to show the absence of minimum due process protection, as per New York, um, New York State Civil Service Law, Section 75B, New York State Labor Law, 740, and New York's Local Law, 33, under Whistleblower Protections Act, the administrative law judge could reserve, reverse the civil servant's termination and award back pay and attorney fees. If the employee should... Shows the termination was EE of an equal employment opportunity and whistleblower law. The MSPB may also award for punitive damages via pain and suffering. Okay. Tell me if I'm wrong. Because, um, what is that? Let's, let's go there. You think I'm kidding with you. Oh, that black law dis, 
the dictionary is something beautiful. It's something beautiful, baby. It's something boo. It's oh oh oh. You see right there? See it backwards? Treble damages. Treble damages, right? Which is basically remedies in action in action rising ex what's this con was contractual some status gives trouble damage uh trouble damages and these stats um stats, status have been liability construed to mean actual trouble damages for example if the jury gives twenty dollars damage for a forcible entry the court will award forty dollars right more forty dollars more so as to make the total amount of damage sixty dollars the construction of the words trouble damage is dif is different from which has been put on the word trouble costs see damages so basically the damages is what it will fall under your remedy and it'll fall under the awards in the whole nine yards so based on the fact on the fact you did issue that letter right you did make that termination right you did violate that due process right EEO was right there. Y'all both violated the due process. How are you going to have an EEO complaint in place first against a person and then allow that person to bring up charges against the individual who has an EEO complaint against them? Explain that. Because under Civil Service Law Section 75B, under that whistleblower, and most whistleblowers, once you file a complaint and you file the uh, the complaint of, uh, under whistleblower, they can take no adverse actions. No adverse actions. Your employer is, is forbidden for taking adverse actions. It's that simple. If you think I'm kidding, Google whistleblower. Google, Google, uh, subsection 75B, civil service law, subsection, subsection 75B, the double S means subsection 75B, and, and read it, read it, where it says, basically, um, you have to use, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna tell you, basically, um, subsection 75 in reference to them using uh, that subsection 75 for um, any actions that you did, which would bring about um, incompetency or misconduct. And under incompetency and misconduct, it tells you what it is they can use it on. And then under that, they must bring about a burden of proof under a preponderance of evidence. Okay? Now, under that preponderance of evidence, they must prove that you did this. All right. Now, there's a burden of proof on both sides of the fence. It's not just on one side. Don't get it twisted. It's on both sides of on the fence because you, as the, if they can, if they, if they're the plaintiff and they're making you the defendant, you must prove under a burden of proof how the charges are fraudulent. Uh, how even if how even if they violated the due process. Once you once you show how they breach due process, everything's thrown out. It has to be thrown out automatically. Why? Because they breach they breach the due process. So then once they breach that, under uh, your fundamental fairness and fundamental rights, which brings about due process, which brings about the uh, fifth and fourteenth amendment under the Constitution, where you're protected under your life, your liberties, and your property. Your job is your property because you paid for it. 
So in order to take it from you, they must use due process. Now, if they violate due, pro due process of this matrix, then it falls on a substantive and substantial right, which is the private sector and that. So if they even made a decision, it's automatically uh, vetoed. So on the record, just proving with your, oh, we, 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 we made a decision. It's not a problem. Not a problem, because with the uh, the judge and the lawyers, do you know the uh, what you call the judicial officers? How they violated their code of conduct, which would bring about what's that? Four eighty seven judicial misconduct, which is a class A misdemeanor, which makes them liable for suit. Yeah, that makes them liable for suit. So the lawyer, he's liable for suit. And both lawyers are liable for suit because of the fact they violated their due process. They violated their corporate compliance under the canon's law. So when you say the canon's law by the mere appearance of an impropriety, something that was wrong. So they when they when, when you could when you could show what it was that was wrong, you will go to lawyers. New York, New York State um, Lawyers Code of Professionalism and Responsibilities. You will go to number one, which brings about their integrity. And then you will go up to number nine, will be about the appearance of impropriety. Lawyers are to avoid improprieties, even the appearance of an impropriety. Just like judges. Judges are to avoid, um, candidates too, are to avoid impropriety, even the appearance of an impropriety. Now, the mere fact that the... Employers representing an attorney was submitting its fraudulent information. The union representing attorney for the employee was to say was supposed was 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 required under his oath to say that stuff is fraudulent, and then basically it's thrown out and it's not it's in use it's inadmissible in court. It's thrown out. Can you prove that it's fraudulent? Yes. Why? When the sergeant wrote it up, the officer was off duty. When she made the phone call, he was off duty. So the mere fact that her to tell him to do something while he's off of duty, it constitutes a violation of the corporate compliance policy by intimidation. And when you go to intimidation, you're going to go to subsection 13560 by under threat and coercion. That's real. That's real. Now, the next thing is the mere fact that... And giving the officer a directive while he was off duty to respond back to command. Once you give him an order, you're placing him on the clock. Am I correct? For him to do something, you got to put him on the clock. Because the officer responded to his work location as per the monthly schedule. If the monthly schedule said to get to the moon, and he got to the moon prior to the start of his tour... You don't tell him, come back here and get here before your store starts. No, he got there. Yeah, he made it there. Okay. To go from that location, which is a work site, to come back to the, the primary work site, you must send transportation under your contract, under your patrol guide. You must send transportation. It says so in your patrol guide. All right. What is that? Page 54, paragraph C. All tours, all supervisors must assign an officer to the patrol vehicle. It's in the guidelines. So that action right there of, 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 of insubordination, that's thrown out. They go to the second one where the supervisor, where the tour commander came in and screamed on the sergeant. And he got upset and then just turned and screamed at the officer. Your employee doesn't pay you to talk to your officers that way. That's an action of intimidation. Oh, he talked back to me because you gave it. You got what you give. Well, I'm going to write him up. But you didn't write him up right then. You wrote him up two days later. <sighs> Violation of the patrol guide. What's that? Hospital police, hospital security manual. What would that be? That would be violation by uh, 
what is that again? Uh, the uh, memo book. Everything's supposed to be entered in the memo book as well as the 124 book in chronological order. I have a question. Did you enter that in, in your memo book? No, you didn't. You did it two days later. Most supervisors, when they write an office, uh, officer up, they take his memo book and write it up in the memo book. Did you write it up in the officer's memo book? No, you didn't. You got the 124 book sitting right there. Did you write it up in the 124 book? No, you didn't. So this is when the judge says it was cooperated. Your actions of insubordination and your complaint of insubordination was actually cooperated. You made it up. You made it up. Into an instrument for filing on the record, punishment instrument, 21045, class A misdemeanor. Filing on the record, 17530, class A misdemeanor. But you got up on the stand just as well as the other sergeant. You both got on the stand and made and you know, you, you was as a witness, right? And you both lied. Two ten forty. All right, perjury on the stand. That's a felony. That's a felony. Both of you felons. There's more felonies broke in this case than imaginable. And then you're gonna say, let's terminate him. Let's terminate him. You are the designee. And you went over, it says it in your letter, hang you by your letter. You said you went over all the documents. You mean all the fraudulent documents? If it wasn't fraudulent in any form, fashion, manner, or way, why did y'all all run for cover six months later? You all transferred out to different locations. The guilty transferred out to get, you know, to try to run and duck. And then you threw the others underneath the bus. You was affiliated with it. We do have a mayor. We do have, uh, what was that? The, the city advocate. Mm -hmm. We do have a state attorney general. Mm -hmm. We do have a city comptroller and state comptroller. Mm -hmm. The watchdog should be getting in this because you definitely violated Mayor Order 16. You definitely violated that. And because, let's go there, your employees of the city of New York and the whole nine yards under the Health and Hospitals Corporation. Uh, because you violated U.S. Code 42, the beautiful thing is that there's no statute of limitations on that. There's no statute of limitations on that. So, <laughs> you know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's like magic, baby. It's like magic. It must go down. Y'all been sitting easy like, oh, we got away with it. You ain't getting away with Jack. You ain't getting away with Jack. Your actions dictate how you should be dealt with. Your actions. You failed to do what you were supposed to do under your signed contract agreement. I want you to understand this. How many people <laughs> terminate for their failure to follow their corporate compliance under their signed contract agreement? Okay. We're not even going to go to the side of, to, to the side where you let this fraudulent dirty director, probationary, probationary employee, where he did all this running them up ne negativity. I, I was in the elevator one day. I'm going to go there. I was in the elevator one day. And I ran into a sheriff, a sheriff officer. And he had some seating arrangements for um, an event. And I just looked at it. Oh, you're going to have such, such, and such, such. And he caught on like, oh, you know what that is? Yeah, sir. I'm a former law, um, law enforcement officer from Health and Hospitals, Hospital Police. And he said, like, yeah. And we was just talking. And he was like, what facility? And I said, from Woodhall. And he said, what? And I said, yeah, Woodhall. He said, who was the director? And I told him the director's name. And this brother was Latino. 
He had a look on his face that he was so disgusted, so disgusted when I said this guy's name. I was like, whoa. That means they talk. I went to another uh, interview for a situation, and the person that was interviewing me knew everything that went on at the facility. They said, you work there? And I said, yeah. They knew about the entire department. How did they know scared, scared, scared the crap out of me? I didn't know. They was asking me questions, and I would not tell them. But let's get back to the desert knee. Let's stay on the port. Let's stay on, on, on point. Like I said, how did you come up with that letter? Well, you say, uh, I'm going with the administrative law judge? How did you get past the whistleblower? There was a file complaint. How did you get past that? You even spoke to me about it. Remember when he said this and the supervisor told you? That was in what? March? Two, that was like March 2009. Because when I came back from the surgery, the old boy was waiting for me. Yeah, that would be 2009 because that's when we had that meeting with the union. And he was waiting on me because he knew what he said. And yes... Supervisor told me exactly what went down at that meeting. That's when old boy said, "You need to be sergeant." And I said, "Well, I failed to I failed the test at that time. I smoked it after, I smoked it." And he's like, "Cause I was tired the first time." And he said, "No, you need to just really think about it." So, are you indirectly offering me this position? So, like, if I take this position like a fool and there's a sergeant's list, how do I get that job when the other people who took the test and passed it and I didn't? When my name was not on the list, how do you stand up in there and say, well, I got this? Man, this dude was corrupt as hell. He's like a version of training day. <laughs> Yo, I got to go. I got to go. This is like I said, we're going to stick to that senior vice president as the appointing officer and her designating her designees as a, with appointing authority. And their acts of gross negligence, their acts of their own corporate compliance, fa fa failure to follow their own corporate compliance policy. Download it. <laughs> Read it. It's in every bit. Hold on, hold on. I got the old version of your corporate compliance policy. I got the new version. And it's still in there. Think about it. On that note, you know the real deal. The facts cannot be altered nor denied. Y'all have a nice day, and I'm out.